almost always generate controversy, but they actually be with us longer than we think. A GMO is any organism whose genetic material has been altered using genetic engineering techniques and are widely used in scientific research and production of goods such as medications and food. Since the year 2000 before Christ, humankind have domesticated plants using selective breeding, in which organisms with desired traits are used to breed the next generation. But the first official GMO was made by Herbert Boyer and Stanley Gohan in 1973. This genetically modified bacteria could survive the anti antibiotic canamycin when it couldn't do it before by successfully inserting a plasmid with that antibiotic resistant gene. GMOs have many uses in the pharmaceutical and agricultural industries, as well on the food industry. For example, genetically modified bacteria are used to produce a protein insulin to treat diabetes, and similar bacteria have been used to produce biofuels clotting factors to treat hemophilia and human growth hormone to treat various forms of dwarfism. In terms of plants and crops, genetic engineering have done a great impact. With genetically modified plants, um, they could have disease and plague resistance, as well as different colors, shapes, and sizes. In the case of animals, genetically modified mammals have helped on the field of research of human diseases. In this practice, PCR will be used to identify a DNA sequence common in transgenic foods. Genetic engineers use mainly a small number of regulatory sequences to control the expression of the inserted genes, so these sequences are common in the majority of GMOs. When the DNA is obtained, it passes through a denaturing stage in which DNA strands separate followed by the primer annealing and the extension of the annealed primers. Then, the results will be analyzed using an electrophoresis technique. The materials used for this practice are a screw cap tube with 500 microliters in the gene matrix, food samples, disposable plastic transfer pipettes, micro pipettes of 2 to 20 microliters, micro pipette tips, mortar and pestle, ice, TGO master mix, red on ice, plant master mix, green on ice, TGO positive control DNA on ice, test food DNA, non-TGO food control DNA, PCR tubes, agarose, foam microtube holder, a TAE, graduated cylinder of 500 milliliters, microwave, Erlen Mayer flask of one liter, water but set on 95 to 100 degrees, analytical balance, permanent markers, and distilled water. To begin, three tubes were labeled as follows. A. Non-TGO for the food control DNA. PY for the tube with the papaya sample. SY for the tube with the soy milk sample. Then, 500 microliters of instagene matrix were added to the three sample tubes. After this, one gram of non-TGO food control was weighed out. Five milliliters of distilled water were added to the mortar with the non-TGO food control and grinded with the pestle. Five volumes of distilled water were added to continue with the grinding. Next, 50 microliters of the non-TGO food control slur were added to the appropriate tube. Fifty microliters of the soy milk were added to the label tube. One gram of papaya sample was weighed out. Five milliliters of distilled water were added to the mortar with the papaya tissue sample and grinded out with the pestle. Fifty microliters of the papaya slur were added to the appropriate tube. Then, the three sample tubes were capped in order to mix appropriately with the reagents. After this, the three sample tubes were placed in the water bath at 82 degrees Celsius for five minutes. Following this, the tubes were submitted to centrifuge at 12,000 RPM for five minutes. Next, the eight 
PCR tubes were labeled as follows and kept on ice. Then, five macroliters of plant master mix were added to one, three, five, and seven tubes, and five macroliters of TGO master mix were added to remaining PCR tubes. Next, 20 microliters of the supernatant from the DNA test food samples, non-TGO food control DNA and TGO positive control DNA were added to the corresponding PCR tubes. Finally, cubes were placed on the thermal cycle for the PCR reaction with 40 cycles and set as follows. Initial denaturation at 94 degrees Celsius for 2 minutes, denaturation at 94 degrees Celsius for 1 minute, annealing at 59 degrees Celsius for 1 minute, extension at 72 degrees Celsius for 2 minutes, final extension at 72 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, leaving the samples at a thermal cycle at 12 degrees Celsius. After that, the agarose gel was prepared at 1% of concentration and 1 microliter of ethidium bromide. Two microliters of loading dye were mixed with each of the DNA samples. Five microliters from the DNA marker and 10 microliters from each sample tube were added into separate wells in the gel. The electrophoresis process was set at 100 volts for 40 minutes. The term GMOs is most commonly used to refer to crop plants created for human or animal consumption using the latest molecular biology techniques. These plants have been modified in the laboratory to enhance desert traits such as increased resistance to herbicides or improved nutritional content. The enhancement of desert traits has traditionally been undertaken through breeding, but conventional plant breeding methods can be very time consuming and are often not very accurate. Genetic engineering, on the other hand, can create plants with exact desired trait very rapidly and with great accuracy. Not only genes can be transferred from one plant to another, but genes from non-plant organisms also can be used. Genetic engineering techniques now allow scientists to insert the specific genes into a plant or animal without having to go through the trial and error process of selective breeding. Genetic engineering is therefore extremely rapid compared to selective breeding. With genetic engineering, you can also cross species very easily. Nowadays, the use of genetic modified organisms has turned into a polemic subject. Arguments say that there are a possibility that the implementation of this kind of plants will alter the environment where they grow and develop, and unexpected resistance to the alterations present in pest-resistant plants. Campbell and Ali mentioned in their work with GMOs crops that arguments that GMOs cause problems for the people that are allergic to antibiotics because the selectable markers that are used to modify these types of organisms is wrong. For this laboratory practice, samples obtained from fresh papaya and soy milk were analyzed to demonstrate if these two foods are genetically modified. In order to achieve this, the DNA was extracted from both of the samples. The design of the experiment included a positive and a negative control. The total number of PCR tubes used for the procedure were eight because each sample and control was done in replicate. For the PCR reaction, two set of primers were used in order to confirm the GMO. The first primer identified a sequence present in types of plants that cause for a gene that, according to Gustav Ambroser, is the first protein complex in the light-dependent reaction of oxygenic photosynthesis. Even though the primary objective of this practical was to identify a sequence present in GMOs, the PS2 gene has to be amplified also to add validity to the results. If the band for the GMO sequence was not present after the electrophoresis, we can confirm that this happened because, in fact, the sample does not come from a GMO. Know that our DNA extraction and amplification was unsuccessful. 
The results obtained after the electrophoresis of the PCR products were not the best case scenario. According to the way that the primers work, only the line 5 and 6, which are the positive control for the GMO, work because we observe a band of approximately 500 base pairs, which is similar size to the PS2 gene that is 455 base pairs. At the line 6, we can observe a band with a size of 200 base pairs, which corresponds to the site of the 35S promoter from the cauliflower mosaic virus. The most used sequence for GMO production are the 35S promoter gene from cauliflower mosaic virus, according to the Odell and Nagy. This is why the presence of a band with the same size after conducting a PCR with the promoter gene primers confirms the sample is GMO. The lines 3, 4, 7, and 8 that correspond to both of our samples did not show a band for the tubes with the 35S primers. Nevertheless, as it was already mentioned, the band for the plant's organisms should have been present to confirm that it is, in fact, non-GMO. After this, we can conclude that the extraction of the DNA from the papaya and the soy milk was not successful. This result was expected for the case of the soy milk because of all the food processing, but if the papaya tissue was fresh, there is no justification of obtaining no band in the gel except an experimental error, because 75% of the Hawaiian papaya crop is genetically modified to withstand the papaya ring spot virus.